Baruch Hashem, last week we finished uh, the Talmud series, finally. And uh, I would like to start uh, a new series. It's called Mesilat mm -hmm. Yesharim, Path of the Just, Path to the Just, Path of the Just. And uh, for those who did not know, this is perhaps the most classical Musar book in Judaism. It's a, it's a combination of many important things that we need to know. It was written by one of the greatest Kabbalists who ever lived, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, 250 years ago. He, he passed away about 200 years ago in Padova, in Italy. He's uh, very famous. He's uh, buried today uh, in Tiberia, in Eretz Israel. In Yerushalayim, in Harnof, there is a big building, very, very fancy building. It's called Machon HaRamchal, the Ramchal Institution. Ramchal, it's abbreviation of Resh, Mem, Chet, Lamed, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, Ramchal. Uh, he wrote in his life more than a hundred books. Most of them are gone. We don't know where they are. They disappeared, but some of them stayed, and they are very, very influential book. Uh, like I say, besides being a big chacham, was a huge, huge kabbalist, and uh, is a classical example how a person become a million time bigger after his death than in his life. Uh, this book, Mesilat Yesharim is basically the guideline of a human being how a person should behave, how to reach perfectness, how to become a perfect human being, what needs to be done in order for you to be considered not only that you're righteous, you're even above righteousness. In the introduction, of, I mean, he lived only 38, 38 years, that's it. 38 uh, years altogether for his entire life very short life, in such short period of, of time, he was able to write hundred very, very deep books, more than them, and also by, he was working as a diamond cutter for his living. He wasn't getting donation or anything like this to live, he was working as an artist making diamonds. That was his, uh, that was his job. Uh, in his life he suffered tremendously the rabbinical institution could not believe that a person age 18 years old already claimed that an angel comes to him and show him the secrets of the Torah. They put him on a ban. Uh, he had to hide. He, he was suffering tremendous insult. They threw things at him, spilled things at him. But uh, everybody finally realized who he was, like I say, after his death. He had a group of learners, of students that were hiding with him in an attic somewhere in Padova, were learning very, very big Kabbalah, practical Kabbalah, not theoretical, and uh, used to do tikkunim, tikkunim for the world, for the safety of the world, for the safety of Am Israel, very, very deep and dangerous stuff. Uh, the way they were discovered is by one businessman who came to learn in the University of Padova and he heard the rumor there's a group of Kabbalists hiding and learning and he wanted to see what it is and he went there and of course he was very amazed from what he seen and he stayed more and more and more and then one, letter, one day he sent a letter to one of his wealthy friends to support this yeshiva and that's how it was discovered that he continued to teach Kabbalah and the rabbis told him, you know, you have to sign, you know, that to, to teach Kabbalah. All kinds of problems, especially when he was very, very skinny and hardly had a beard because the Italianos, like, like some of the Latinos, they don't have fake beard. It's very, very thin beard. You're, you're 18 years old, you're so skinny, you hardly has a beard, you look like uh, 15. You're already a rabbi, such a deep mind rabbi that teach such levels and then age 18 you claim that you see you have discoveries of an angel. It's, uh, it's not difficult to understand why everyone was afraid. Who is he? What is he doing? 
But today, of course, like I said, there's no doubt everything is clear. It's one of the most legendary people who live in this place ever, in general. And this is how he opened the introduction to his uh, famous book, um, uh, Path to the Just. He says like this, Chiburze, this book, I did not write to teach people what they don't know. I just came to remind them what they already know. And it's very famous, famous to them. You won't find in my words things that people do not know about or have any doubts about. The opposite. I'm going to speak about very famous and well-known things, that the truth of them is known to everyone. But because it's so famous and so common, people turn to neglect them and ignore them. That's why this book must be read many, many times. Reading it once won't do any good. Really, if you ask me, a person should know this book by heart. How many times you have to read a book to know it by heart? 101 times. But you have to read it carefully, not just to read like you read uh, an article. This is a very deep book. This is what he says. The The, the effect of this book will only come to the reader after he repeatedly going over it again and again and again. And he will start paying attention to things that he's ignoring constantly. If you search in the world today, you find that the intelligent, the sharp brain people each one of them use his brain and his intelligence according to his desire and love, to learn what he loves. Some people, mathematicians, scientists, doctors, all kinds of things. There are some people who put all their efforts in science, learning about nature, about the creation, discovering things. There are people who are in engineering, all day inventing machines, engineers, years after years. There are people who learn different profession and put all their life into it. And there are people who direct their life into the holiness, into learning Torah, <coughs> the holy Torah. In the Torah, there is also different direction. Some will put all their efforts in learning halacha, the Jewish law. What's the laws? Some into the Talmud, digging into the Talmud from all directions. But only few, only few, very little, only few would dig and go deep into the learning of the perfectness of the work that the Jew has to do in this life to reach a perfect level in following Hashem instructions. Shlemut avoda, The perfectness of the work, of the avoda, of the efforts that a person has to have in his life to reach the truth of God. The love, the fear, the dvekut, the close, the closeness, and all the other parts of the chasidut. Hasidut means one level above righteousness. Not only what you must do, what you have to do to reach even a higher level of it. Not because those things are not important to people. Not because they don't, they disagree that this is the most important things in the life of a person. If you ask each one of them, they tell you this is for sure the most important foundation. No one is denying it. If you speak to a real Chacham, not a fake Chacham, what do we learn from here? That there are two kinds of Chachamim. Some that are only Chachamim on the book. You, you think they are, but really in reality they are not. 
they can make a lot of impression, but really in reality they are not what the Torah called the Chacham. שלא יתבררו אצלו כל הדברים האלה. If you talk to a real Chacham, you won't find one that will deny that this is the most important thing in life. Everyone agree. Everyone admit. But they are not putting all their life into it since it's so famous and it's so common everywhere you go that people will not really dig seriously into it to understand what it means. Therefore, therefore, When finally you find a person that put all his efforts into this learning of the Musar, the ethics, the people around him would mark him as a limited person. Ah, he's learning Musar all day. He's not a real shark in Gemara, Talmud. What does he do all day? Learning Musar which is like a secondary kind of student. Why is it? Because you want to prove that you're somebody big, right? We, we want to see how you perform in Gemara. Many people mistakenly think that how a person is becoming a Hasid. Now remember, today when you say Hasid, everybody thinks black hat, peot, beard, going like this with his peot all day. No, that's not a Hasid. Or have a fair hat on Shabbos. That's what people call today a Hasid. But what the Torah called the Hasid is something completely different. The Hasid of Hashem and the Hasid on the street today not necessarily have something to do with each other. Some of these Hasidim are also real Hasidim according to the Torah. But some have nothing to do with Hasidut. They just look like it, but they're not. So he's talking now real Hasidut. People mistakenly think, listen good to this, this is a very common mistake even today, definitely 250 years ago. Some people mistakenly think that to reach this level of Hasidut, which is above righteousness, the only way to do it is to do a lot of Mizmorim and lots of Viduim, to read a lot of Tehillim, all days praying, reading Tehillim, praising Hashem, and do confession all day, Chatati, Aviti, Chatati, Aviti, fasting, constantly fasting, going into ice, rolling on the ice, taking the suffering to erase the sins. But the truth is that Hasidut is exactly the opposite. None of these things. That's really not a sign that a person is a Hasid. It could be a person who cares, he thinks that's the right way. But the real Hasidut, the real Hasidut, the perfect, the ultimate level, is far away from this direction. If a person won't dig and pay all his attention to it, he would pass over them without realizing. It's not easy to gain control over it. And it's very easy to make a mistake and to replace it with something fake that sounds and looks sometimes almost the same. So it means the difference between the truth and the false is very thin. You gotta be very sharp and clever and to put a lot of efforts to tell when is it real Hasidut and where there is fake Hasidut which gives you nothing.
so, so far the conclusion is I'm not coming to tell anything that you don't know. You heard about it. You read about it. You heard about it hundreds of years before me. Everybody understand it, but almost nobody get to this level. So what am I doing here? I'm coming. I'm coming to highlight the most important way to achieve the ultimate level of Hasidut, of righteousness, of above righteousness. Sometimes you find a person that learns a lot of Torah. You see right away he's, he's loving the Torah. He's crazy about the Torah. It's a positive addiction. But the way he learns Torah is digging and going from all direction around the same subject. It's called pilpulim, investigations in his mind. All kinds of things that are not in the end productive to improve himself. Which means, yeah, I will give him a clear picture of the sugya in the Talmud, in the Shas. But is it making him a better human being by the end of the day? The answer is no. But if you, will, if you would focus on the subject, what this book is about, for sure it will elevate his personality. It will make him a much, much better person. And this is exactly the purpose of life. What's the purpose of life? Just to know a lot? No. To know a lot without improving who you are. You're still the same proud person. You're still, you're still jealous. You're still stingy. You're still angry. You're still lazy. You still don't have a muna. You're not honest. You're not decent. You're not sharing. You're not bal chesed. You have no kindness. You're arrogant. So many problems about you. You're not a good husband, you're ungrateful, you're not faithful, you're not a good father, you know. Everything you finally do something is not for the sake of heaven. You always think, what's, what's in it for me? And then, oh, you know, 60, 70 years, you look very religious and everything fine. And then you come to Shamaim and you find out that basically your whole life was, like they say in Israel, grinding water. You grind water, you still have water after a million years. Same water. You grind, 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 but you really did not achieve anything. But what do you mean, Hashem, I finished the Shas 50 times, the Talmud. It took me a few years every time, from morning to night, all day, it's digging, smoke coming out of my ears. Very nice, and you're going to get reward, reward for that. But the ultimate purpose of life, you really hardly touched. You came in a, in a level 15, and you came to level 20, that's it. You did a little, of course, you cannot stay all exactly the same. You made some progress. But if you focus on what we're talking here about, you can reach 80, 90, maybe more. One of the main reasons that people do not achieve this ultimate goal is that they busy with everyday nonsense. Hevel. The, the evil of this world, the nonsense that surround every, every corner of this world, everywhere you go. And makes us busy with so many not important things as long as we don't clear some time to focus on the most important thing in life. The love the love of our mission, the love of our Creator that should be always in the heart of a person, right? And it's not easy to keep it there, as we all know. How do we get to this level that it will be there non-stop and will never leave us? How are we going to get excited every day again from the same things that we do? Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, praying thousands of times the same words. How it's going to be like fire in our heart every time like we just started? How do we going to get glued, stick to Hashem, 100% attached? How we purify our soul and our heart and the brain from all kinds of bad thoughts? How are we going to 
overcome all the birth defects that we're born with. How are we going to straight our nature that it's sometimes crooked? How we make it straight? If we are not going to put all our efforts in this work, the chance that we're going to make some kind of improvement or progress is not even 1%, zero. It's basically zero. This kind of religious people, it's called mitzvot anashim melumada. Mitzvot, commandments, that people are already used to. That's an expression, which means a robot. He can finish a 15, 20 minutes mitzvah, and by the end of it, he doesn't even remember if he did it. His mind for 15 minutes was somewhere else. You know? And this is what King Solomon say, Shlomo HaMelech, in Mishlei, chapter 2, verse 4, Im tevakshena, if you request it, Kakesef vechamatmonim techapsena. If you're going to search for it, for what? For the ultimate level that you can reach in this life, with your relationship with God, with your Creator. If you finally decided to search for it, it's already a big step. Most people don't search for it. They live in total darkness. They have no idea what they do here, Bichlal. 70, 80 years, such a one big lost life. Not one man, not one productive minute in their entire life. Not one positive moment in their whole life. 70 years eating, drinking, running, driving, sleeping, waking up, making money, doing, crying, laughing. Everything in the end was one total waste of time. Did not touch one second their mission that the Creator put them here for. What a tragedy. The biggest tragedy possible. No, there's no bigger tragedy than this for the individual and for us as a nation. If you cook, collect all the small tragedies, I mean, every, all the individual tragedies and combine them together, it's a one huge national tragedy for the entire nation of Israel. But I'm talking here about the individual here. Each one of us, if you don't do it, nobody will do it for you. Nobody will do it for you. Remember, nobody will make you humbled. You only can make yourself humble. Nobody will make you. Nobody will make you generous if you won't work on it. Nobody will make you honest if you don't kill yourself to become honest. How you become honest? You improve your faith. The more faith you have, the more emuna, the more honest and generous you are. One comes out of the other. If you don't have emuna, you'll never be generous. If you don't have emuna, you'll never be honest. You always cheat. You don't believe that it's 100% what Hashem wants to give you, and that's it. And there's no point of stealing, cheating, lying, deceiving. What's the point? Stealing for myself? If it's mine, it's mine. If it's not mine anyway, it's going to leave me. So what's the point? It's like one person who steals from one pocket and put in the other pocket. And thinks he got away with it. If it stayed by you, it was yours to begin with. And if not, it will never stay by you. If you finally decided to search it, King Solomon says, do it like a person who search for a treasure. You know how the people are with the map, they go, oh, they kill themselves months, following, digging, trying here, trying there, the desert, digging under the ground, in the ocean. I, only one thing in their mind, where will I finally put my hand on the gold, on the treasure, on the diamonds? As tavi nirat Hashem, which means we have something very deep here. Level number one, first to get to a level that you decided to search. To search. You finally decided to search for the truth and for the right direction in life. Now when you decide it, it's not enough to search like the little kids. You ask your son, where is the car key? Search for it. Five seconds later, I can't find it. Did he really look? Of course not. He just waited five seconds to fool his father. He doesn't want to search. So now you tell him, oh, you want to come with me? You have to find the key first. 
two minutes later he comes with a key, because now he really searched. You understand the difference between thinking you're searching and really searching? Many people think they search for Hashem. That's why there are many Baalei Tshuva that are the biggest hallucinating people on earth. <coughs> they live in a big total illusion that they're really on the right direction and they finally found the truth. But they didn't even find 1% of the truth. And they already said, well, yeah, I'm very good now. Look, you know what I used to be? You know what I became now? <laughs> what do you became? You a drop better than what you used to be. Yeah, your ultimate goal is way far from what you think. It's like a person that doesn't have a dollar in his pocket and his goal is to reach a million dollars and he finally got five dollars. And he's so happy, he can buy candy finally. He has five dollars, wow, what an achievement. I used to be a total loser, now I have money in my pocket. And he thinks, wow, very good. If you only knew that he still need to get 999,995, I would, I would realize that I didn't do anything, basically. I'm, not, I'm still in the beginning. As tavin irat Hashem, when you finally give all your efforts to search for it, maybe then you finally understand what does it mean to be fearful from Hashem. We are not even talking about reaching the level of loving Hashem. Ahava uleira. We're talking something that consider a little bit lower. Irat Shamaim, Irat Hashem. Irat Hashem. Eno Omer Astavin Philosophia. Ah, no, you're not going to, uh, to become a philosopher. Wow, what a smart guy you became. No. Or you become a famous uh, doctor or, in, or an expert in medical. Or you know all the laws of the Shulchan Aruch. No, that's not what he wrote. What did he write? As Tavin Irat Hashem, only one expression, fear from God. After you put all your efforts to search for it, one day you'll be able to understand what does it mean to be fearful from Hashem. Not what you're dreaming that you think you're afraid from Hashem. I always give an example, if a person would make a scene and he will feel the feeling that he feels when the policeman pull him over at 2 o'clock in the highway, how he's shaking, he can't find the license, he's getting confused, doesn't know what. You see all these two big, scary, you know, German cops like this. He's thinking to himself, wow, what am I going to do now? You know, especially in Jersey, you can get arrested if you drive a little bit too fast. It's very nervous now. He heard stories, everything ran in his mind. His, his blood is frozen. If he has a weak heart, he can get a heart attack for one $100 ticket. But that's a fear. Wow, what fear he has. And over here, people can go seven years and never had that feeling once when they made a sin. Even a sin of karet. Even a sin of karet. A person was with, was with his wife, and he thought she's pure, and while they were together, he found out that she's nida. If he really had fear from Hashem, he would faint right away for a week. Inten, inten, intensive care. For a week. For knowing, wow, I maybe now violated karet now. What happened in reality today? He gets upset for five minutes. Tomorrow, in the davening, he asks two or three minutes to forgive, and then right away, he's going to the comedy show. Not really fear. Illusion, yeah. Fear, no. Then you're going to understand what does it mean to finally understand what does it mean the requirements to be fearful from God. So we learn from here that to understand irat shamayim, the term that, you, that we probably hear more than any other term, irat shamayim, yare shamayim, fear from God, fearful from God, fear, fear, fear. This kind of fear is a mixture of few different kinds of fear. It's not only fear from the punishment or fear to get smacked, no. It's fear that is involved with the shame and embarrassment and, and, and a feeling of ungratefulness. It's all combined. This, this, is, this is what we're talking here. When you understand who you just committed a sin in front, 
not in front of your girlfriend, in front of, of something that is a shame. If you have a little bit understanding what just happened now, then of course you understand what does it mean to be feared. Nobody understands that. I know a few people who do, but they, walk, they read this book more than a hundred times, and they got to a point that they live according to it. And that's why these people probably never make scenes. Never. They always watch their eyes. Always. They always learn serious. They always honest. They never lie. They, they have such irat shamayim. If they scratch a car in the parking, they won't get out of there until the owner comes that they can pay him right away for the damage. You understand? Some people would leave a note, which is also very good. But some people won't take the risk of leaving a note. Maybe you won't realize, maybe the note will fly. Maybe one of the kids will pull it over. I can take such a risk that I'll go to Olam Abba and I owe somebody $50 for the scratch I made him. I can ruin my entire life, this thing. You understand? Most people don't even leave a note. Right away they run. With a beautiful beard. But this is just to show us what does it mean. הרי איפה במה שהם לומד לנו מאבותינו, מה שמפורסם אצל כל בעד, בן דעת דרך כלל, soon I'll explain, הנמצא זמן לכל שאר חלקי העיון, והעיון הזה לא יהיה זמן. We found time to investigate and search and research everything in life, except the most important thing which is this, to reach יראת שמיים. והנה הכתוב אומר, The Book of Yob, Yob 25, 28, verse 28 also. אין יראת השם היא חוכמה. Fear from God, that's real wisdom. A real wisdom, real wisdom is not that you know very well math, or that you know all kinds of uh, history books. Or you know a lot about politics, or sport, or anything you can think of. Reshit Chochma Irat Hashem, the beginning of wisdom, is finally when you reach the level of fearing God. That's what King Solomon say, Ashrei Adam Mefachet Tamid. How lucky is a person who always afraid of Hashem, always afraid. How lucky he is, not like today all the fools. No, no, don't let people scare you. It's brainwash. They make you scared. No, no, it's not good. That's not the right way. Be quiet, you fool. The right way is what the greatest people in history wrote, not what you say. Who cares what they say? Don't ever let them tell you this nonsense. Even if they're rabbis, it doesn't matter. A person can be in a very great position in his life and he's a total fool. And he speaks from his own opinion, not from the opinion of Hashem. Why? Well, he say things that he, he thinks that that's the right thing. Well, we don't care what I think or what he think. We care what the Torah think. And the greatest people that ever lived that told us all the secrets of the Torah. Because we wouldn't be able to reach it on our own. Once in a blue moon you have such a chacham like Luzato that knew everything from all direction and deepness that will come and and, may, and clarify the picture for you. Otherwise, we would need to live 7,000 years. Maybe we'll reach it on our own. So we learn from the greatest people, the Rambam, the Ramchal, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Akiva. We learn from them, and it's a very big shortcut for us. Because we just follow their advice. So what does it say? It says like this. שהרי היראה היא חוכמה, והיא לבדה חוכמה, listen good, fear, it's the wisdom, it's the ultimate wisdom, and it's the only thing that can be considered wisdom, nothing else. Please remember this for the rest of your life. Don't ever be impressed by someone who can tell you hundreds of books by heart. You only can be impressed from him if he lives according to these books. That's it. Otherwise, he has good memory. He put lots of, of time to remember this book, to memorize them, fine. 
They didn't make him a better human being, no. That's what we say in Pirkei Avot. There are two kinds of people. There are people who their, their knowledge comes before their fear from God, and there are people who their fear come before their knowledge, which means this is the scale, the side of the scale, the knowledge, and this is the fear. If the fear is heavier than the knowledge, the knowledge is also a real knowledge, because the fear comes before. If the knowledge comes before the fear, the knowledge is zero. Remember this, zero. Not 5%, 10%, zero. That's why there's halakha in Shulchan Aruch. You're not allowed to learn Torah from a teacher or a rabbi or anyone that doesn't have irat shamayim, that doesn't live according to what he preach. Not allowed to learn from him. Not only it won't be productive, it'll make you a damage. Because Torah, it's a spiritual food. You're eating now. You're eating and your soul is very hungry. And the soul is always hungry. It will never be full. Not like the body. You stuff the body, you're full for six hours. The soul, you eat and eat and eat and eat. The soul only gets more and more hungry. They want more and more Torah. So when you eat, it's very important if you eat kosher food or not. If you feed your soul not kosher food, which means Torah that is taught by a person that is not according to what Hashem allow, it makes you damage, 100%. That's, by the way, the reason that if Mechalel Shabbat slaughter an animal, took a sheep and slaughter it, and he made it completely glad kosher, 100% according to all the rules. Not one mistake. Knife is smooth, check the animal, check everything. And it's not Shomer Shabbat, the animal is not kosher. Can nobody allow to eat it? It's not kosher. Now you look at two animals. Someone who's Shomer Shabbat slaughter and someone who's not Shomer Shabbat, and they both did exactly the same. Same thing. Well, you don't see one little tiny difference on the animals. One is a blessing, one is a total poison to eat from it. Destroy your soul. Not kosher meat. Why? What is it? Well, reality is reality, no? When a person that is not Shomer Shabbat slaughter it, there is no significance, no importance, no value to his knowledge in slaughtering. It's zero. That's why it's not considered nothing. It's nothing. Why? Because it's Mechalel Shabbat. He has no fear from God. Zero. He has zero fear. Zero fear. Your shechita is pasul. It's taref. Taref. Completely taref. Muhammad will eat it. Halal. Yeah. That's what's happened. So... The Ramchal, this is only the introduction. We didn't start the book yet. Make no mistake. This is only the introduction. We didn't get to the specific subjects yet. He's going to talk about different subjects. Then, when a person really search and dig very well in a proper way, in a deepness of the Musar, of the ethics, he will find that what people think is Hasidut is pure stupidity, pure foolishness. Let me give you a few examples of what he means. Many people are impressed if they see a person that pray makes all kinds of faces. Ah, what a tzaddik. Today it's even worse than that. As, as long as the person just had beard, right away it's the Baba Ali Baba. They're standing online, maybe it'll, maybe they'll touch his hand. You know? All kinds of nonsense that you see today. It says that's really nonsense. People are very impressed for general knowledge. I said knowledge means nothing. The person is a better human being or no? He lives according to the Torah. He lives, he has fear from Hashem. He has irat shamayim. Then it's, then it's a different story. And he continues, and it says like this. Great wisdom is what Moses taught us in Deuteronomy 10, verse, verse 12. What is your God asking from you? But to fear God, 
to follow all his ways, to love him, to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. Let's go by the right order. The Torah is not a newspaper. Please remember. The Torah, every verse, if it starts with a list of things, it's go from the first to the second to the third. There's a reason for it. And now Israel, the messenger of God, is teaching us the ultimate truth of our Creator. And now Israel, what is your God asking from you? What? To know 5,000 books by heart? To build your muscles? To eat like a pig? To beat up your wife? To look at the naked girl on the streets? To eat everything that moves? What is your God asking from you to do? The answer is to fear him, number one. Don't ever let people fool you. No, no, it's too strict. Too much pressure. That's the way it should be. And if it's not like this, it's fake. It's fake. All these fake preachers, love, love, love. Nothing stayed out of it, nothing. Nothing. First, fear your God. To follow his ways, try to be like him. He's merciful, be merciful. He's kind, you be kind. He's honest, you be honest. To love him, it's only the third in the list. To love him, to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. You are a servant in this world. And not only you shouldn't be embarrassed that you are a servant, you are the luckiest person that from all the people in the world, the king, the master of universe, chose you to be his close servant and gave you the title, my son. When a, when a son serves his father and all the slaves who work in a house, I mean all the maids, the, the cleaning people, but the son also bring tea for his father and the maid an hour later brought tea. Any one of the guests thinking that the son did something that lower his honor or, or pride? No. no. It's a son, son to father, the opposite. It's a sign of closeness. When the maid bring the tea, Senor, may I enter? Yeah, no, stay outside, don't talk now, I'm busy. But the son is different, he doesn't need permission. He comes in, here, Abba, I made you your tea. It's different. We have to feel lucky that we were chosen to be the real servants of Hashem. The Goim also have a little bit services. But we, are, we have a lot of things to do. Not to talk about the huge reward, but even if there was no reward. Based on who your boss is, then we can determine your level. You know the drivers? If a person is a tiny businessman, makes a million dollars a year, and he has a driver, driver drive a lousy car, the driver dress with jeans, holes in the jeans, no hat, no tuxedo, nothing. But if he's a multi-billionaire, you see how the driver dressed, $10,000 suit. Based on the boss, you see who the servant is. You know, like you go to Fifth Avenue, Park Avenue, these mansions over there, you go inside, you see the doorman, his suit costs 10 times more than my wedding suit. Why? Who is he serving? You go to other cheap neighborhoods, the doorman can come with anything he wants. Come open you the door, nothing. But over there, as soon as the person comes out of the elevator, he runs, grab the bags from him, he comes, he comes with umbrella. <laughs> I've seen it. Based on the servant, based on the boss, you know, you see right away why the level of the servant is very high. To be a servant of God is the greatest honor. But many secular people never get the point here. Ah, it's too much. I'm not interested. I want to be religious, but it's too difficult. Instead of dancing, they were chosen. So, the Ramchal continue. It says like this. To keep the mitzvot of Hashem, is laws, and he included all the pieces that if a person does all of them combine, he reach the ultimate goal, the ultimate perfectness. Fear, following his way, loving him, 
purifying the heart to love him, keeping all the mitzvot, and the fear it's called irat aromemut, not fear from the punishment. That's a very low level. I wish we will have this level today. I wish that we will fear the punishment. At least we won't make sins. But we're not talking this kind of fear here. We're talking fear irat aromemut. You know when a great person comes into the room, everybody in the audience, is, their blood is freezing from the excitement that they finally get to see this person. My cousin say when Chacham Ben Zion Abba Shaul used to come every day to the yeshiva to give the shiur, everyone was nervous. He felt that there's no blood flow, flowing in his, in, his, in his legs. He get numb from the greatness of this human being. Just entering the place, you don't feel it about a teacher in college or high school. So that's why some kids throw eggs at them in a parking lot. That's why they think about them. But when this Chacham used to come in, I remember one time I went to, to Chaim Shaal Synagogue in Avenue N in Coney Island. It used to be Chacham Simantov, Alav Shalom. So he invited Rav Ovadia Yosef to speak in his little Bet Midrash. It's not such a big uh, shul. Thousands of people showed up. The police had to close three blocks with barricades. What do you call it? They closed the, the, the block outside was packed. I knew that the place is small. So I came more than an hour before the time. And I put my camera right by his table, in the chair, the big chair, but much like this, maybe two feet from his face. And I sat there because I knew <laughs> you move. A few minutes later, it started to get packed. It was packed, the whole area. When he entered, they had to bring him from a side door. You should see what happened. You couldn't believe. I mean, mamash, a miracle that there was no casualties. What the people did just to grab, to put their, their hands on his hand, like just to touch him. Almost lehavdil, like someone saw God. That's the, the, the feeling that people felt before he even started his lecture. And when he spoke, Baruch Hashem, no cell phone rang. As many years ago, I don't think there was even cell phone. Nobody made an apchi. Nothing. You can, you can hear the breath. Why? You feel when a great person is standing next to you, you feel it. So this is called irat aromemut. Same thing lahavdil in the army. When your little commander, he come to check your beard, if you shave today or not, you're not so excited. But they, they announce tomorrow the chief of the whole army is coming. Everyone walks, clean his rifle, clean his bed, check ten times. Why? The chief of the whole army is coming. Lahavdil, that's full total stupidity over there. But we see how a person reacts when he has irat aromemut. Romemut means to go higher and higher in a level. And nobody is greater than Hashem. So this is the ultimate fear. That you fear that it's fear that is born from a huge respect. You understand? Not fear from punishment. Fear from punishment is from a person you hate. For some cop on the street, you're afraid of him. You hate him. You hate him, he's despicable in your eyes. Still a fear from him. That's not the fear I'm talking here. I'm talking the fear is born from reaching a level of understanding who am I dealing with here? The creator of such a brilliant world, of such things that we have not, not, not even one billionth of a percent of understanding of his brilliance yet. And that brings you to a very high level. The more you develop this understanding who you're dealing with, the better your behaving become. And that's what the Ramchal writes. A person will be embarrassed to move one move without extra attention. Moving the hand, going like this, itching his head. I'm sitting in front of somebody that I admire greatly. Every little thing you do, you think twice. Should I sit like this? Should I stretch? Should I yawn? Should I look at my messages? Of course not. I better not move. How many opportunities like this I have to, to be in such situation? Ve'evosh migdulato will be embarrassed just to be near him. 
The righteous people, when they reach a very high level, they felt, what did I do to deserve it? They did a lot to deserve it. You don't deserve it just because you have a nice mustache. Nobody gets anywhere because of his look or anything. Only hard work. So believe me, if they are got there, they deserve it. But what did they feel? Because they're humble. What did they feel? What did I do to deserve this? And they always try to make themselves look nothing compared to what they are. Especially when a person stands in front of Hashem and he prays, or when he learns Torah and he understands the merit that he has, that he has an opportunity to talk to the Master of Universe, and he promised that every word we say to him, he listen and record and pay full attention to everything that we ask and say. You know what it is? If you want an, an appointment with some lousy millionaire, six months he play games with you. Yeah, next month, call my secretary tomorrow. Then finally got a meeting with him. How excited you are. Right away, you take your, your wedding suit, clean the dust, take it to dry clean. Tomorrow I'm meeting with Mr. Whatever. Why? Because he gives you two minutes of his time. Alicha bidrachav. I told you once, people who used to go into the stipler, they used to put their hat down on the forehead. Then he won't see their forehead because right away he saw who they are. He had Ruach HaKodesh. People used to come like this to hide their face. Better I hide my face than you find something, maybe it would be a big embarrassment because he used to throw people out. Take him out, he said. Don't want to see you. And this is only a human being. Big chacham, a human being. Imagine Hashem. Mashe biyaru chazal de gemara in masechet 133. Ma'u rachum afata rachum. Hashem is merciful, make sure you are also merciful. Every good thing about Hashem that you know about, right away imitate him. And the Chazal say in Pirkei Avot, chapter 2, it says like this, Kol shehi tiferet le'osea, everything that is glorious to the ones who do it, will tiferet lo min ha'adam. Translation, everyone who goes to the right direction, to the right direction, which means establishing the Torah and the love, right? He makes great satisfaction in front of Hashem, in front of God. And his heart is waking up and he satisfies his father and his mother who passed away from the world. And he will be very happy, very complete that he has the merit to do it. And this is the perfectness of the heart. It will be pure, clean heart with great intention. Attention and intention that I only do what I have to do now because Hashem told me and that's all my mind is. I'm serving Hashem right now. Please do not disturb me. Not with money, or not with job offers, not with shiduchim, not with nothing. Right now I'm very busy. When I do mitzvah, I don't want to hear anything. You know, there are people when they put filin. No matter what you do, you can't make them talk one word besides the tefillah. Nothing. I have the tefillin on me. I'm now in the middle of a mitzvah. Don't talk to me. No messages, no they towing your car, nothing. Life risk, talk to me. Pikuach nefesh. Nothing else. And sometimes people have one leg in a Right side, one leg in the wrong side. That's very, very tricky. Finally, you do something, the other leg destroy you. Half enough, it's nothing. You make sure all your heart is going in. Keep everything to the highest level, with all the conditions, precise. Torah, when learning Torah, bring you to be cautious. It sharpen, it's sharp your senses. You are extra alert. Being alert and cautious bring you 
to be a faster and more effective worker. Effect, the, the, the effect, the being effective, bring you into clean heart, purifying your system, your heart, which re bring you to a total isolation in the level compared to the rest of the world. And this isolation bring you to pure purity, which will grant you to midat chasidut. You go above righteousness to the ultimate goal. And that, kind, that righteousness, this midat chasidut, make you humble. Because you know, I don't deserve big credit for it. And being humbled eliminate making sins. You won't make sins because you are humble. And making sins and, and being humble and not making sins elevate your holiness. And elevating your holiness brings you to a level of a prophet, Ruach HaKodesh, that you begin to see things that other people don't see. And Ruach HaKodesh and this prophecy, this Ruach HaKodesh brings to the resurrection of the death. I wrote my book not only to teach myself and also to remind others all the conditions of all the levels that we have to go through until we reach the ultimate goal. <coughs> and each one of these details, how to gain or God forbid to lose, how to be careful from the lost, that we will get the level of fearing God and remember our obligations towards Him that the material addictions, the materialistic addictions around us, always remove this knowledge and understanding from our hearts. What's the biggest enemy of a Jew on the way to get to the top level in Hashem's pyramid, in God's pyramid? The materialistic desires, food, women, movies, sport, baseball, football, this player, that player, this car, this watch, this party, sushi, steak, barbecue. That's the biggest enemy. And almost nobody feels that way. Ah, fanatic. Why not to enjoy life? Enjoy. You can't get close to Hashem because you're addicted to it. It always comes before the goal. If the servant is busy eating sushi in a wedding, can he be a good waiter? He's, be, he's addicted to the food now in the kitchen. Can I work? Nobody ever told him, don't work. You can work. The boss doesn't say anything. But he cannot be a good, faithful servant. Cannot do what needs to be done. Why? He's busy with his addictions. It's all of us like this. The materialism of nature, removing it from our heart, and confuse us with our research to get and find the truth. And our foolishness, our foolishness cause us to lose everything. And this is what Hashem say, this is what David HaMelech wrote in Tehilim, Oreni Hashem darkecha Ahalech ba'amitecha. Show me Hashem your way that I can walk through the aisle, the truth of yours. The truth. Show me the right aisle to enter. This aisle, this aisle, this aisle, millions of aisles. Which one is the aisle of the truth, of the ultimate way to get to you? Yached levavi leirad shemecha. Dedicate my heart to do only one thing. What is it? To fear you. Nothing else. I don't want my heart to be busy with anything else in life. Only one thing I want my heart to be good with, King David wrote. What is it? Fear you. If I fear you, I know I'm going to reach the highest level. This is the end of the introduction. Since we have a few more minutes, let's finally start chapter one. Now the book begins. So far it was only the introduction.
יסוד החסידות ושורש העבודה התמימה. The foundation of the חסידות and the root of the work, the perfect, complete work between a person to his creator, which is us. Who is שיתברר ויתעמת אצל האדם מה חובתו בעולמו that it will be clear and truth by the human being what is obligations in his world not in the world, in his world because the obligations between one to another are not always the same. And what does he have to put his views and his directions in every hard effort that he invests in his entire life? which means we have X amount of energy. It's not unlimited. Just like the, the, the engine of the car has 300 horsepower, that's it, it cannot go to more. This is limitation. And we have limitations. We have X amount of energy. You use it on the wrong thing, you won't be able to use it again for the right thing. You lose this energy, right? So if a person has two electric devices and only one battery and use the battery for the stupid device that doesn't gain anything, then when he wants to use it in a real device that brings him a lot of profit, there's nothing left. So he says like this, first thing in the life of a person that will be clear to him and he will know 100% what is obligation in his life. And where does he have to aim his direction in every effort that he put and invest in his life? This is perhaps one of the most important sentences that a person can hear in his entire lifetime. If you understand how, what exactly it means. Ve'ine ma sh'orunu chachamim And this is what we learn from our sages Chazal that a person was not created, it was created only to have, to enjoy the greatness of God and to enjoy His Spirit, which is the greatest pleasure and the only real perfect pleasure from all pleasures exist ever. Again, the pleasure that a person suck from his creator, the pleasure that go from the, from the creator of the world into the human being, which is us, is greater than any pleasure that a person can even imagine in anything he knows or exists. And this is the only purpose why God created us in first place. Why He created us, if somebody asks you. Why Hashem created us? The source of good wanted to benefit others from His greatness. If there's no others, there's no one to give to. There's no one to share to. Just like a father, that have a billion dollars and cannot have kids. The value of the billion dollars go down 90, 95% just because he has nobody to give it to. He would rather have 10 million dollars and have few kids than have a billion dollars and have nobody to give it to. Clear or no? Because the source of good wants to give from his greatness to others and that's his pleasure. Father that help his children and see them how they help, help them in their life and make them happy and convenient, etc. This is his pleasure. Their pleasure is to receive, his pleasure is to give. The source enjoy to give. 
the receiver enjoy to receive. That's why you need receivers. So we are the receivers, no? So he made us. So now he created us to give us from his greatness. By the way, the question that arises, but there's much more pain and agony than pleasure in this world. How much pleasure you have here? You eat five minutes pleasure a day, ten minutes a day. You know, how many pleasures you have in life? Most of life is hard work, traffic, sicknesses, anxiety, stress, divorce, children problem, education, forgetfulness, a lot of problems. So what's going on here? We'll get to it. That's why we make this series. And the place of receiving this pleasure is not in this world. It's in the next world. Right the way we ask, so why he created us in this world? You say that he wanted to give us his greatness, no? And the place of receiving it in the next world. So why to have this world to begin with, Bechlal? It's a not necessary step, no? Let me, let me go right away. You created me to receive. Put me there to receive. Because the creation, which is us, needs preparation to start receiving from the Creator. Preparation. But the way to reach this destination is this world. The preparation is right here. Just like when a person wants to be a computer programmer, he has to take a course and could be in a different place, not in a business where he works. He goes to a place, college, a, a, academy, whatever, and they teach him over there, and he gets his certificate. And it was very difficult, very hard, until he got his skills, they prepared him, and now he go and make millions, whatever. So the idea is, this is a place of preparation. You have to go to a place of eternity when you're going to receive the greatness, but over here it's a place of preparation for that moment. And this is what the Gemara in Pirkei Avot says, chapter 4. It says like this, Ha'olam hazeh dome leprosdor. This world is a hallway. All the way to the next world. A hallway that takes you from one room to another. Ve'ha'emtsayim ha'magim el ha'adam letakhlit zeh. All the necessary things that a human being needs to reach this purpose, to reach this goal, they are the mitzvot, the commandments that the Creator ordered us to keep in the book of instruction, what we call the Torah. <coughs> and the place of committing these commandments is only in this world, not in the after. Over there, there's no more committing mitzvot. That's it. It's impossible. Over here only. That's why the person was created in this physical world, in the beginning, to use these commandments to prepare him to receive his place in the next world, in Olam Abba and receive the greatness that he earned thanks to these commandments. And this is what the Gemara says in Masechet Eruvin, page 22. Today, in this world, to do it, tomorrow, in the next world, to receive the reward of it. Not here to receive the reward. Over there the reward will begin. When you view this thing, you find that this is the ultimate perfect way. But only being close to Hashem Barach will reach you to that direction, to that destination. And this is what King David says in Tehillim 73, Psalm 73, verse 28. Ve'ani... Kirvat Elohim Litov. Me, close, being close to God, that's my good. No, nothing else. Just I'm close to Hashem. 
I don't have a penny, I'm a shepherd, people think I'm a mamzer, a bastard, I'm sitting somewhere in a mountain with some sheep cleaning their dirt, giving them some food, lonely, no friends, not married, no money, my family neglecting me, what else? You, you find any other problem in life that he doesn't have? And he say, my life is perfect. Why? Every second of my life I'm attached to you. The rest doesn't bother me. You know what it is? Imagine a person that has 50 sicknesses. Cancer, cholesterol, heart attack, hand, uh, back problem, vision problem, hearing problem. Anything you want, you can think of, yes. And now there is a way to go like this and eliminate everything in one second. Like this. How? By thinking about one thing. Think about it, feel that you connect to it spiritually, everything goes away. You don't feel no pain, no vision problem, no hearing problem, no care, nothing. This is what it means to be close with Hashem. When the soul is glued to Hashem, doesn't matter what happened to you. This is Rabbi Yochanan, is a perfect example. You know a person that 10 of his sons dying, all of them die one after the other, he buried 10 of them, he didn't break his spirits, he continued to learn as usual. You know another person in the world that can get to, to this level to continue to go to work as usual and run the office after he buried in a period of time 10 of his sons one after the other? You know one person that wouldn't be in a mental institution with, uh, with shots, with psychiatrists? Can he, still get mar can he still stay married? No. Can he make money? No. Can he eat? No. Can he sleep? No. Can I do anything after such a thing? In Israel they show one time in a memorial day people who lost one son in a war. 20, 30 years from morning to night they have a chair next to the grave, that's all they do. Sit there from morning to night, not one or two. Tens of parents they interview in a show, in a cemetery. What are you doing here? Every day I'm here. That's my whole life. Come here nine in the morning until night and I go home. Sit with my son, with his tomb there. One, they can't function anymore. They collect a little bit of disability, they live very poor in a room, their marriage is broken, they cannot function, they cannot do anything. One, why? They don't have closeness with Hashem. They don't have Hashem in their life. So one tiny problem in here, it's not a tiny problem, but it could have been a tiny problem if you are connected to Hashem. Since you're not connected to Hashem, every little bug becomes an elephant. Every tiny problem becomes a massive problem. Depression, anxiety, stress, agony, no mood. You see what's going on out there. Why? No connection to Hashem. Those who are connected to Hashem, they are in the light. All these little things. Ah. Imagine it's like a person has a hundred dollars and a penny fell down. Bother him. If he doesn't have Hashem, the penny is like $99. Why? There's no Hashem in your life. So, what does he say here? It says like this. I have one request from you, God. One. You know another person in the world that has only one request? No. David Amelech has one request. Shivti bevet Hashem kol yemechayai. I'm begging you, ha have me sitting in the yeshiva from now until the day I die. No kingdom, no chief of the army, all the things that he was later. Don't want any of that. What do I want? That I'll be able to sit in yeshiva and never walk out of the door. Inside your Torah, perfect attachment between me and you, that's it. I don't want anything else. Don't want money, don't want women, don't want sports, don't want horses, don't want houses, don't want anything. What we all crazy about, he doesn't care about. What am I asking from you? Please make sure that I'm always attached to you. That's it, the rest I don't really care. You give me, you don't give me, I don't care. Like, like one time I told a story 
There was one rabbi, his wife working, selling jewelry. So twice a year she go on a show. So he has to sit in a store instead of her for a few days. Usually all year is in yeshiva. And she make a living for the family. So I see her, he has to come to sit in a business. So from the minute he opened the store, he sits and reading Tehillim for what? That no customers will come into the store today. He pray, Hashem, please make sure no customers come in. That I'll be able to learn and be with you together like we every day together. No one customer. I'm sitting here, my wife wants me to sit in a business. If a customer comes, somebody has to serve him. But please don't send customers in the three, four days that she's not here. Ah, you know another person like this today in the world? Why? I don't want someone to interfere. I have a meeting with you. I want a customer to come give me a thousand dollars. It's going to be 20 minutes that taking me away from you. I can't. Just like Leavdil, like those drug addicts that they need the drug now and they're ready to kill for it. Translate it to something positive, not such dirt. That you are with Hashem, like the narcoman, like the drug addict, needs this drug and is ready to kill his own children for it. Or his mother. Why? Because he cannot live without it, unfortunately. Here, it's completely positive. אחד שאלתי מת השם אותה אבקש, שבתי בבית השם כל ימי חיי, דיסוס. That's the only good. There's no few goods. This is also good. This is also good. No. Don't make that mistake. That's the only good. Once you find out and taste from that good, everything else that you thought is good tastes like mud, like poison. If you think that other things that you do in your life is delicious, because you never really ate something really delicious. You understand or no? If you take somebody who lives in Zimbabwe all day, what does he eat? What does he eat over there? He has delicious food. Now you come, you bring him to a fancy restaurant, great chef. <laughs> when I was in Miami, on Shabbat, we walk on the street, I see a big gate of a club. You can see right away it's a fancy club. So one of the young guys say, you know this club? One bottle of wine inside is $18,000. <laughs> one bottle of wine, 18000 Then I look in the street, it's Shabbat. But you know, Miami business as usual. It's not Monsi. Monsi, you feel Shabbat. You smell Shabbat in the air. Not one car in the whole area. Over there, cars, people, there, everything as usual. You know, like Brooklyn, like everywhere else. So I see like, I don't know, seven, nine Bentleys standing there online, one after the other, online, <laughs> waiting for the boss. The boss is spending now $50,000 on two bottles of wine. <laughs> I always think to myself, if one person that is about to starve and his children are shaking at home from the cold weather, come and beg him for $2,000 if he can help him with food, he kick him from the window. But he doesn't have a problem spending $18,000 on a bottle, which between me and you is total baloney. Even for those, even for those who understand the greatness of wine. You know, for those like the, the, this French expert, oh, this wine, ooh la la, ooh la la, wow extra $10,000 for, for another sip. How dumb people can be. How dumb people can be. How dumb. And you know what's the biggest, the sad, the biggest sad thing here? That they don't even understand they dumb. At least you do something stupid, you know it's stupid. No wonder you get out of it. If, you, if your kid is five years old and you jump on a table in a, in a living room, Leave him alone, he's still a monkey. Two years from now, he understands it's foolish, he'll stop. But these kind of people don't understand it's foolish. Of course they won't stop. They only... Brainwashed. This tastes good, you know, and they get brainwashed. This is something good? Yeah, 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 but why I wasn't brainwashed? You know how many times people told me all this nonsense and never, never affected me, Why? If you use your head, you won't fall into this nonsense. Why people fall into drugs? Total stupidity. How a person allow himself to go into something that, first of all, is very expensive? It's not a necessity. It's not something you need, like water, like bread. You, you must have, if not, you're dead. It's not a necessity. It's very expensive and usually ended with total destruction of your life. 
how a person is willing to try it once. Or cigarettes. Why in the world a teenager will try to smoke a cigarette knowing it can only bring him bad, nothing good? Sicknesses, problem, coughing, he loses shape, and it cost him, I don't know, how much it cost now? $10 a pack. So probably $20 every day, it's hundreds of dollars a month. It's completely crazy. Why? To look cool. One of the people spreading smoke. Actually, there's a benefit, uh, one benefit for a certain disease for cigarettes. What is it? Uh, some people who have ulcers in their intestines, it relaxes them, so it prevents them from having diarrhea. That's why, pe that's why people smoke in the bathroom all the time. They go to the bathroom, you cannot breathe from the smoke. Could be. Do you think it was proven that it helps? No, I don't know. It, it, it is? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, imagine you go to work, you have to pay $40 to your boss to work by him, and he pays you a dollar. You pay 40 he gives you a dollar, you pay, and you work. You pay him 40 and you get one. You pay 40 you get one. How long it will take until you'll be on the street? You know, a few days, no? So, what people think is good is nothing by total illusion. When a person will taste from this good, from the real good, after he worked very hard to achieve it, and will be close with Hashem, and will overcome the separations between him and God, which is the physical desires. Physical desires are holding between you and your God. Think about it. How, what's the payment that you have to pay for it? The more you're in love with physical pleasure, the less you're in love with Hashem. The more you are tired, sick and tired of all this nonsense, the more your love and closeness to your Creator is rising and rising and rising. It's a massive, very heavy price to pay for that cream cake, for that five minutes with this prostitute that you did, or whatever you do, all these ten minutes of supposedly pleasure here and there, have such a massive price to pay. Amazing. It's a massive war. War for your existence. War for your eternity. Don't think it's only a piece of steak, Rabbi. Making a big deal out of it. I'm not touching cocaine. It's steak. Sushi. It's healthy. What? Rice, fish. What's the problem? It's not that. It can be the most healthy food. It's the addiction that all day you're thinking about your lunch, where are you going to eat today? Tomorrow, oh, the bagel store, the muffins, the croissant, oh, I cannot live without it. Right or wrong? Yes. Ask the Bukharian wives, what's the outcome of the love to the delicious food? What are you doing for dinner? It better be good when I get home. Dinner is not good. Oh, wow, ah, the rabbi hear from here tomorrow. Rabbi, he wants to divorce me. Why? There's no hot food. The addiction for this nonsense destroyed every piece of your life. <coughs> and this is what King Solomon say, and we'll finish with that. Pen esba vekichashti. Please, Hashem, help me not to be full from these desires that I will chas v'shalom be full and deny who is Hashem. This is what the Torah says, v'achalta v'savata, the Torah says, shamer lecha pen tishkach et Hashem elokecha, be careful that you won't forget Hashem. Shamanta avita kasita v'shachachta eloha, v'aitosh eloha. You ate, you became heavy, you are stuffed, automatically you forgot your God. That's a, that's a law in nature. Who is speaking to Hashem more? The hungry people or the full people? The hungry. Go every place in the world. The poor neighborhoods have more churches than the rich ones. The poor neighborhoods have much more mosques than the rich ones. 
And the poor neighborhoods have much more synagogues than the rich ones. Everywhere you go, go to Israel. Go to the places where all the big, massive, millions of dollars homes, in a whole town, maybe one synagogue, don't have even ten Shomrei Shabbat there. And you go to the poor neighborhood, every two or three blocks, one next to the other. That's the, the way of world, the world is. Ve'amarti, mi Hashem, King Solomon, King Solomon, we're not talking somebody who came, became Baal Tshuva yesterday. King Solomon said, Hashem, if I'm going to be full from all this desire, from all these pleasures, I may get to a point that I deny your existence. And I will say, and steal, and do all kinds of bad things. When a person has peace, peace of mind, peaceful life, no problem, no living problem, no parnasa, everything is ready. The servant, senor, what for lunch today? You like it well done? That's his life. Doesn't have time for Hashem. Look, check. He's very busy with other things. Staying by the pool, this vacation, a new jet ski came out. Oh, new computer, new iPad, I this, I this, everything. I, 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 everyone is egoistic. I. Nobody you, for you, for me, I, everything, I, 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 today the whole world, iPhone, I this, I this, right, take away your life. Ay, 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 there is peacefulness and suffering on the other side. Which one will get you closer to Hashem? Not peacefulness. Suffering. It's a war. If you be a hero, you win the war from all directions. And then you will be the perfect human being that will finally be close to Hashem, the closest possible. And will get out of the hallway and enter stairway to heaven. You remember there used to be a song, Stairway to Heaven? Accidentally or not, maybe because of the holy name, it was the most popular song in the history of music in the United States. Every year he wins number one from all the songs ever been played on the radio. I don't know, I didn't listen to this music for 20 years, but at least that's how it was in those days. Maybe things changed, maybe something better came up, I don't know. So, he will come out of this hallway and enter the life, the light of life the life of eternity. Just thanks to overcoming his desires, his evil inclination, and going and sticking to Hashem, the real happiness is coming now. And if you dig deeper, you find that this whole world was created to serve you for that purpose. You know, they will finish with this, but you know, they, they, I saw two days ago, a, someone sent me an email with a YouTube video that proved scientifically that uh, the more convenient the life of the person is, the more depressed he is. If you want, contact me, I'll send you that email. I send it to my subscribers list. If you're on, you saw it. Very interesting. No, nothing Jewish, something American, Goy. They prove scientifically by doing a research and surveys the people who have the easiest lifestyle are the most miserable one. Guarantee. It's a fact now, that's it. They made a long, long, many years of research. And they admit they have more emptiness. They have more thinking, more bad things, more kinds of depression, all kinds of things. Very interesting. This video only says exactly what the Torah was always warning from. What you think it will bring you delicious lifestyle and all kinds of things, think again, it will destroy you. Because not only you don't enjoy here like you thought you are, in the end you lose the real pleasure that will never end. Most people remember the introduction, the first 10, 20 minutes that I said, what did he say? People know about it. No, he's not talking about the seculars that don't have any idea what they're doing here, no. People who are going to yeshiva every day, learning Mara all day, 
They know everything I read now, everything I'm about to read, every Musar book they know. But they don't pay deep attention to it. So it passed from here, you know? Like the same Hebrew, enter from here and right away come from there. That's why they're not changing. 20 years is in Yeshiva and he's still proud? 20 years in Yeshiva and still doesn't believe in Hashem? You owe him $50, he's ready to kill you? 20 years in Yeshiva and he sees something that is questionable if it's kosher or not and he cannot hold himself and he grabs the meat like a, like a pig? 20 years in Yeshiva, what's happened here? What did you do 20 years in Yeshiva? What happened? Well, the whole purpose of the Torah was to make you a perfect human being. To go to heaven. To the place where, where God wants you to be. That He can give you from His greatness. And after 20 years, besides memorizing many books, most of them even forget what they learn anyway. What in the end? Nothing. The most important thing passed through here. They were busy with everything. It's like somebody that has 50 mines in a field, bombs. One is massive, can kill the whole city. And all the other ones are little ones. Can make a tiny explosion. He kill himself, fixing this, fixing this, fixing, fixing, fixing! And the one that will destroy the whole place, he didn't even touch. And then boom, and it's over. This is us. Mishnah, Shri Rabbi, look, he knows Mishnayot by heart. He won the contest. Gemara, wow, sharp brain, this, that. Be careful, you cannot fool this guy. He knows everything. Reality-wise, still looking at the naked girls on the street. Still, you see him in a restaurant, how he attacked the food, the trina and the hummus dripping all over. 100% a pig. How he talks to his wife. I don't even want to repeat some of the things that I hear. Why is it? They didn't read this at least a hundred times. Remember, if you don't want to change, you will never change. First, remember what I said before? First, you have to know that this is what you want to search for. And then maybe one day we'll find. Bezrat Hashem, next Wednesday, try to be on time. So it's, I want to keep it one and a half hours, not longer. Today I started 15 minutes late. Thank you. Baruch Adonai Amen.